Hey, welcome into the epicenter where we're going to continue exploring what does it look like to be the epicenter of the boom. Hey, welcome back to the epicenter. My name is Keith Too Good. I'm joined once again by my partner in this. Yes, sir. Roswell Smith. It is good to be back. Junior. Thank you, man. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. You put some glory <laughs> on that. Season two, uh, you guys are in for a ride. Buckle up, tune in. We can't wait to get started. Yeah, we're excited, man. Uh, wrapped up season one back, I think it was like February or March, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, and spring. then over the last uh, six months or so, We've really been in this new season of of just watching the Lord move and waiting on Him and mm -hmm. and leading us through. I think at the end of season one, we mentioned the six eight summit right. um, coming up, and uh, we'd actually planned it for October. Yep. Um, and then as we got deeper into this, we've yep. never put on a a, a yeah, summit a or a, a major before, conference right. and. Uh, man, we got really deep into mm -hmm. it, and we're loving everything about it. But what we did realize, we just needed a little bit more time. Yep, and longer the, ramp. Yeah, a little longer ramp, mm -hmm. uh, a little longer runway yes, sir. Uh, to get this plane to take off properly. That's right. That's right. And uh, God just really, he he was, I felt at peace about that. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't want to rush it and right. all that good stuff. And so yep. we're still on. It's still coming. We just don't just know the exact date yet. A little ramp, yep. A little longer of a ramp. Exactly. I uh, just need a little bit more time. There's a lot of logistics involved in that. And then, and we had, you know, four people, uh, five people in essence, yeah. uh, working on this thing, meeting once a week every Wednesday, but all doing their full-time job. Yep. Um, and so we just wanted to make sure that we did this right and brought Absolutely. the proper thing and the glory to, to God. At the end of the day, yeah. our whole desire is to bring glory yes, to sir. God, not ourselves, not you, not me, not anybody else, mm -hmm. none of the speakers. Yeah. Our whole heart is to say, man, turn to God. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And and realign and get your focus back right. And to add to that, yeah, to also make sure that our guests are served well. Absolutely. Um these guys are like, you know, like many of you, CEOs, entrepreneurs, heavily in business, um, taking time away from mm -hmm. operations and their families. Mm -hmm. So when we're inviting people to these conferences, we want to honor them well. We want to serve them well. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So, man, I'm looking forward to season two. Um, yes, sir. Man, we've got, we've been talking about our lineup, uh, guests. Mm -hmm. One of the things that in season one, season one was really about laying the foundation. Yes, sir. Um, I'm in the home building business. Um, mm. And so uh, laying that foundation is critical right. uh, to make sure that the structure that's built on top of it mm -hmm. uh, will sustain, will yeah, last. Will last. Come on, yep. man. Don't yep. build your house on the sand, right? <laughs> uh, but build it on the rock. Um, and so Indeed. as we build this thing, uh, we want to bring other experts in yeah. um, that, man, they've got a different view on on the calling on our lives and different things. And so one of the things is we look into season two and as Boom as a whole, we've just seen a lot of great things come out of Boom, man. I, I'm so encouraged by uh, the reaction we've gotten, mm -hmm. whether it be the luncheon or whether it be equipping guys on how to share their faith yep. uh, in the marketplace, yep. um, or just telling them and helping them understand their identity. Yes, um, because that was that was what woke me up. Yep. You know, I, I felt after I realized I'd been cloaked by mm -hmm. the devil. Um, and thought, okay, well, I'll just go listen to you, Pastor, on Sunday. Right. Um, you know, and, and we get into this this rhythm. You yes, like sir. the word rhythm a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And we get into this rhythm, and we're there, and we just kind of we just kind of go through the motions. Right. And one of the things I've realized over the last eighteen months um, is going through the motions is is not around anymore. In my opinion, right. it's become very fluid, as you would like to mm -hmm. say. Um, and so ultimately putting our faith and trust in the Lord yeah. uh, to guide us through as, as believers and followers of Christ uh, to pull us through this time. Mm -hmm. And ultimately what I believe is, is redirect us to him. 100%. Yeah, there's uh, so much to be said about all of that, man. Um, just taking a swing at the idea of the times that we're in I think uh, speaking to the fact that these are fluid times, mm -hmm. lots changing, a lot has changed. Uh, you know, we, we thought we were out of the pandemic. <laughs> now we're kind of back in right, it. Kind of right back into uh, it. People's, you know, home life, people moving. There's a lot happening. And so uh, the Lord spoke to me um, just real in a real subtle way, man, just about, you know, 
these times, man, and they are fluid. Mm-hmm. And gave me the word flexibility. You know, just just being flexible mm-hmm. uh, with the fluidity of the times, man. Not not being uh, emotional about it, not being moved by it, but just you know, staying flexible. Mm-hmm. Um, one example that came to mind as you were talking really was Jesus in the boat, and the boat just rocking, uh, Come on. waves just crashing. I can't even imagine what that must have felt like. <laughs> I've done some some white water stuff before yeah. rapid. I mean, but it's they say it was worse than that. Yeah. You know, the, the historians. This was a raging storm. Yeah, right? they were out, not in a, you know, uh, a stream or a lake. They were in the ocean. Yeah. And so Jesus is in the boat, just, just you know, just kind of within himself, mm. maintained, focused, resting, actually, is what mm-hmm. the Bible says. And the disciples are going, are going nuts. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the message in that is we all know that, that story. Yep. He speaks to the storm, right? Tells the storm, hey, chill out. It chills out, then turns to the disciples. Now y'all chill out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, where's your faith? Yeah, I'm giving you layman's terms, but you get what I'm saying, right? So, so in the same respect, um, we are no different than those guys in that boat. Yeah, yeah. And we have to maintain uh, our bearings, keep our hearts healthy, mm-hmm. keep our focus on Christ, and just stay flexible, man. And, and, and that's just the word, right? We, I know the last luncheon we did, you did a good job speaking to uh, the issue of fatigue and being tired and being dry. The word you came yeah. to was dry. Yeah. Speak to that for a little yeah, bit, man. So that was good. It's, it's one of the things I felt mm-hmm. um, yeah. is just felt, man, just, uh, just worn out, right. you know, because everything that I'd known for the last, we've been in the home building business now for seven years. Crazy. And everything. Wow, man, seven years. Yeah, seven huh? years. Yeah, I couldn't believe mm, it. So, that's awesome. Congrats, um, man. Yeah, thank you. So mm-hmm. we've we've been doing it for seven years, and, and for the first, you know, five and a half, six years, it was pretty, you know, dependable. Like, you knew kind of what was going on when you got a bid. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you, you could count on that to be – Pretty in place, right? Right, right. And now, man, lumber. Everybody, everybody's talked about lumber, right? And lumber <laughs> went absolutely bonkers, and yeah, it, did. it was it was insane. Yeah, and, uh-huh. and having to remain flexible and figure out, all right, how do we go about this, and how do we figure this whole thing out? Well, then lumber's actually come back down, but what nobody's really talking about on the home building side is HVAC and mm-hmm. shingles are going up and PVC on plumbing. And so there's kind of this like swap now. Right. But what we've had to do is go through and literally before we'll bid it, mm-hmm. send it to the bank, and then we're having to go rebid uh, before just to make sure that everything's right, right and right. in place. And man, it, it's just worn us out, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's been tiring and we're working twice as hard for the same money or less a, a lot of times, right. you know, and... And so it's just been a lot, uh, a lot more challenging of a year. And then I've talked to some pastors and some guys that are, man, extremely deep in their faith. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and they walked with the Lord on the daily. And, mm-hmm. man, they've just, they've, they have both mentioned the word dry. Yeah. I felt dry. And I can say I felt some of the same things. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that I, I love the most is, is um, you know, we talk about the word revival. Mm-hmm. We talked about the businessman's revival of 1857. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I've really been focused in on that word. And when you take it to today's, like, physical terms, <laughs> when somebody is revived, yeah, they were dead. Yeah, yeah. They were dead. There was no life. There was no life. And mm-hmm. somebody comes up and they start performing CPR. Doom, doom, yep. Doom, doom. <sighs> yeah. Right? And they breathe mm-hmm. life back into that person, right, right? Right. And man, God just gave me this beautiful picture of the same thing with us spiritually, right? And how He wants to He He wants us to come back to life. He wants to breathe that life right. into us, That's right? And give us a freshness mm-hmm. and revive us Amen. for Him. Yeah. But not to turn our eyes somewhere else, but to turn to Him. Mm-hmm. And man, when you when you see somebody that's been revived. The person that gets revived, and mm-hmm. then they get to meet the person who revived them. Yep. The gratitude. Yes, sir, bro. That, that person feels overflow. Yeah. It's overflow. They're mm-hmm. like, man, like you gave me another chance at yep. life. Yep. And I think that as we talk about revival, there has to be a level of death. Yeah. That comes along, and I, I remember praying whenever the Lord uh, dropped this in my lap for boom, mm. and let this come out of good times. Yeah. Like what's and and I always joked and I said, you know, He gave me six months, I guess, to to make it happen. And That's then, right. You know, and <laughs> and then the pandemic hits, and I'm like, oh, here yeah. we go. You know, and uh, but. You know, I think as humans, we try and do, fix things through our wisdom, mm-hmm. uh, through our worldly wisdom. Yes, we do. Um, and at a certain point, 
we run out of all options. And right. it's unfortunate that this is how we are as humans. Um, I don't desire it for this to be this way. God doesn't desire it for, to, for it to be this way. Right. But then we finally turn mm-hmm. to the Lord. That's right. And say, man, I've heard about you. I'll give you a shot. Yeah. Um, but I, I've just witnessed so many guys who are tired, they're dry, yep. they're fatigued spiritually, emotionally, mentally, physically, all these things. Yeah. Yeah. And the Lord had, uh, he had led me to a verse and, and two verses, really. Uh, the first one was, come to me, all you who are weary yes, sir. and burdened, and I will give you rest. Mm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. It's Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30. Right. Jesus is saying, man, if you're tired, yep. man, take it to me. Bring it to me. Yeah, that's right. I'll give you rest. That's right. Yep. Rest in me, right? Yep, yep. And then the other was, as, as a group, collectively is boom. Mm -hmm. One of our our hopes and our prayers is that once we've laid the foundation, now it's time to go do and be and carry the gospel with us. That's the that's the great commission and is to carry it with us everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Once you look at business guys, we're the guys that travel the most and you know we're going across the country zooming and you know all these different things that we're doing now, right? And so how do we how do we equip one another and encourage one another yep. to keep going out on the daily? And so the other verse he took me to was uh, first Thessalonians. Yes, that sir. was always a go. tongue you twister for me. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I still struggle a little bit. Five eleven. Therefore encourage one another mm-hmm. and build each other up, just as in fact you were doing. Yes, sir. I think that's, that's one of the major things that we want to come out of this season and out of, of what we do on a monthly uh, meeting basis mm-hmm. for our boom luncheons. And man, if you're a guy that's you know, in another town watching this and you don't have necessarily a boom luncheon, yeah. uh, one of the things that we're really working to, to really develop is these boom groups yes, and impact sir. teams uh, where a group of four or five guys get together yep. and just encourage one another and just mm-hmm. be real. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes leadership um, mm-hmm. is, is thought to be, well, you just don't show any weakness, um, right. or anything like that. Sure, but sure, yeah. I, I would argue differently, yep. you know, that leadership is actually being willing to say, man, I'm tired yeah. and I need some help, you know, and I need somebody to come alongside me. Yeah. All these different things. So. Yeah. Yeah. I would even to that point, you know, the critical nature of leaders is, 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 is to be healthy. You know what I'm saying? It's to, it's to try to always aim to be healthy. You know, uh, a lot of guys burn out, mm-hmm. you know, work hard without rest, without play. And, you know, boom, the luncheon in particular, <clears throat> the one you did last week, last, sorry, last month, that that was really critical, I think, to a lot of guys just in who they are as men uh, because to have that space to be able to hear that and to raise their hand and say, yeah, man, I'm, I'm waxed right now. Mm-hmm. I'm I need, to, I need to take a break. I need to unplug. You know, the reality of it is you might need a break. Mm-hmm. You might need to unplug. And so, you know, we speak to, first of all, let's be honest about it. There's some dryness. There's some fatigue. Mm-hmm. That's normal. Mm-hmm. If you go hard, even physically, mm-hmm. you know, that athletic background we have, if you, if you, if you work hard and you and you train hard, there is going to get to a point to where you're going to experience fatigue, mm-hmm. muscle fatigue, mental fatigue. Um, just overall tiredness. So you, at some point, your body has to recover. Your body has to rest. Your body has to go through a process of regeneration. Your joints, your muscles, your bones. Why wouldn't we think the same thing for us as men, right? Come on. In our in our in our uh, business, in our mm-hmm. home life, how we do what we do. So yeah, I think that I value our platform greatly because of the fact that we have that space where guys can come in and guys can receive a, a, a word like that mm-hmm. and it not be punitive, it not be, you know, hyper-emotional. Mm-hmm. It's just, hey, man, let's just talk about this real quick. Yeah. And that's so healthy, man, because, I mean, what other space, unless you have a gym you go to with guys that you know and trust or you're a part of a league or something, but most men don't have that. Mm-hmm. And especially at home with your wife and your kids, you can't do that because the space just doesn't, it's not just designed for that. You got to sure. be at home, you got to lead at home. Yeah. But I think that we need to be uh, continually pushing guys towards this, uh, this realness of, 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 you know what, staring in the face, I'm tired. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, let's, let's, let's break that down. Let's unpack that. Mm-hmm. Let's look at why you're so tired. Yeah. And then begin to kind of examine how do we get healthy? How do we get whole, right? And most of it's mentally emotional, but I think it begins with the whole like, hey, man, I am fatigued. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'm just tired. And, you know, 
you know this. Uh, about a month ago, uh, my family went through COVID. Yes, sir. Um, yep. I started with it. Went to kids camp. Uh, yep. Went back to Glorietta where, you know, all this yep. began a couple of years ago. COVID-19 yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, came back. And two days later, mm -hmm. I found myself in bed with a low-grade fever. Um, and then two days after that, I lose taste and smell. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, I had a pretty light case. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't too bad. I've, you know, we've had guys that... One of our masons uh, that runs a, a, a masonry company, mm. uh, man, he was in the hospital and, you know, on the vent, Ooh. the whole shebang. And, and he was able to, thankfully, he was able to come out of it. Yeah. But, you know, as I sat there for 10 days in my house, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes. Quarantined. Quarantined. <laughs> yeah, we're, we were quarantined. And, and so I sat there for 10 days and, you know, I do a little <laughs> bit of work on my phone or whatever. But, but as I began to. I began to be more appreciative mm -hmm. of, of some of the things, some of the challenges or some of the things that we faced out in the home building business. And it's like the Lord reinvigorated me and mm. he gave me rest. Yeah, um, that's good. And, and made me pause for just a little bit. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, man, I remember, you know, I lost my taste and smell. Yep. And honestly, it was depressing. Uh, you don't realize <laughs> you don't realize oh, how man. much you value tasting yeah, bro. You food. like to eat. I like to eat, yes, man. Sir, I do. I do. <laughs> right. I like a good meal. I like to cook. Yeah, I like to grill. Man. All Golly, that stuff, man. Yes, sir. And so, you know, you go, it, it, the worst was when you put a piece of bacon in your mouth, man, and, and all you got was a crunch, you yeah, know? <laughs> there was nothing else, yep. and my part, wife bro. cracks me up. She lost her taste and smell, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, her still hadn't come back. She's starting to get her smell back. Oh, uh, really? But, yeah, she, like she hadn't got weeks. her taste back. Yeah, but she, she is a trip. She's funny. Yeah. And uh, she goes, yeah, this, this meal, um, it had three flavors. Um, I got crunchy. I got hot, <laughs> you know, and she, so she's, yeah, she's at least Randy, taking. Those are not flavors. <laughs> hey, hey, to her right those, now, know, man, those are, just, yeah, to her. Those, those are good flavors. What, what, what is she get her hands on? That's yeah, right. That's those right. are good flavors for her mm -hmm. right now. Uh, so anyway, but, you know, it, as I lost my taste and smell. That's right. Um, I would eat some food, but there was one thing, even when I put that bacon in my mouth, there was one thing I could taste, mm. and it was salt. Okay. And. Okay. And as as the Lord, he just he just whispered into me, mm -hmm. um, "You're the salt of the earth." Yeah. And what good is salt if it loses its saltiness? Yeah, that drops pretty hard. That's good. It drops yeah. real hard, right? And mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh man!" And it made me think of us as Christ followers mm -hmm. and 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 ambassadors for Christ. Right? We're called to go. We're called to be different. We're called to be light. We're called to be salt. And as I began to think about that, and and as the world loses its flavor. Mm -hmm and it's taste and, and all these different things, yep. we should be able to walk into a room. That's good, bro. And they should be able to taste something different on us. It's a pretty prophetic word too, cause I think <laughs> just, just seeing this as you're describing it, just hit me, just dropped, downloaded, man. Uh, the world is definitely, man, I think going through this pandemic and going through all the fluid times that we're in, the world, man, is definitely losing like some of its flavor, man. Yeah. Cause the world, I mean, there's some cool stuff in the world. You got yeah. restaurants, you got places to go, things to yeah. do, people to see. As I zoom out and look at, you know, some of my friendships with like non-Christian and um, things that I enjoy doing that aren't necessarily Christian, like, you know, every like restaurant you go to is not a Christian restaurant, mm -hmm. right? Or whatever sure. you do. But there's all of these different things that, that, that are in the world that are really being squeezed right now because mm -hmm. of this challenging moment that mm -hmm. we're in socially. Mm -hmm. And it is 110% like that, bro, mm -hmm. like losing... You know, it's flavor. Restaurants are mm -hmm. shut down. We're in Houston over the summer. Um, bro, so many restaurants that I've gone to, coffee shops, gone. Mm -hmm. Because of the pandemic. Yeah. They can't stay open. Well, and, and it's this is amazing to me. And for me, this goes back to the second pillar. Right. Um, that we talked about yep. and the Lord gave me. What better way to chop <laughs> off the legs of the church, the, the movement of the body, yes, sir. than to go after the one thing that funds it. Mm, wow. and, and how, man, when you look at it, what funds the church and, and the movement and the missions and all these different things, right. well, it's money. Yep. Well, it's what, creates, all the money. Yep. what creates money in yep. our society is the business. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we got businesses shutting down left and right. Yeah, man. And I'm looking at the spiritual warfare that's going on mm -hmm. here, and I'm like, oh, here we go, you yeah, know, and yeah. the Lord had given me that two years ago, you yeah. know, and, and so here we go. And, but I, I just, I just sat there and I thought, man, saltiness. Yeah. We're called to be That's the right. salt of the earth. And I was talking to my buddy, Todd Truesdale, yep. who's been very active in boom and, and amazing mm -hmm. heart for the Lord and the kingdom yep. and, and all these things. And, and he started, he started downloading. Right. Right. And he was like, yeah, you know, here's the deal with salt. He goes, once it's put into something, 
it can't be removed. You can't get it out. Right? right. Salt water, when you when you inject salt into water, mm. there's no way to separate that salt right. back out. Right. right. It's it's there. Or inside of food, you can't remove it. And he goes, Here's the deal with salt though. Not everybody's gonna like salt. That's right. Um, and so just know that you're sometimes when you go and interact with some people, mm-hmm. they, they may not like your saltiness, That's right. you know. That's right. Um, but at the end of the day, when we receive the Holy Spirit, yes, the Jesus promise, right, and the Trinity <clears throat> lives and, and resides inside of yep. us, then, man, we have an opportunity to go be something different, to be light. And that's what I've absolutely loved about Boom is it's, it's allowed us to equip men yes, sir. and women, for that matter, too. We're focused... So we're focused on men uh, right. because we feel that call. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we recognize, man, there are women all over the place that are carrying the gospel with oh, them. Yeah. Um, but For we just feel sure. led to wake up a generation of men. Yeah. And so as I've shared this with guys, man, it's all of a sudden like the cloaking just, whew, it just vanishes from yeah. them. Yeah. And I've had more guys tell me, man, right. man this gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, man, it's just the Lord. Like, yeah. all him. I want to do is help unlock you, right? Yes, sir. For your calling into the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's a, you know, again, that's one of those staples that we always come back to in this this, this, this conversation about um, Christian folk who've been in church most of their whole life yeah. uh, and, and don't feel called to preach, don't feel called to, like, you know, up be on stage leading worship, doing that whole music thing, mm-hmm. uh, but there is a calling, and, mm-hmm. and it's to really point them towards, hey, man, like, look, the marketplace is your platform. That's your pulpit. Come on. You might be a manager, a CEO. You might be. You might be a startup. You know, entrepreneur. Which, by the way, I mean, there there is so many of those mm-hmm. like up and coming now, man. That more and more, uh, this message, this platform is necessary for the, mm-hmm. for those women and men who need to be able to look at themselves in the mirror and say, man, what am I called to do? Am I mm-hmm. just called to kind of, you know, be present in church and kind of hang out yeah. and do the small group thing, or, am I, or is, there, is there more to There's it? More to and it. So, boom, what it does is it kind of pushes that needle a little bit to the top and says, here's actually what you're called to do. Mm-hmm. And here's why God wired you the way that, you, you're, the way that you're wired. Um, here's why you care about these things you care about. Mm-hmm. And uh, they should not be overlooked or put into a category of just, you know, check the box and move on. This is actually a calling. Yeah, absolutely. There's a reason why you, you love this so much. And you got to lead other people mm-hmm. in your organization. And that's where I think the, 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 the sharpest part of the spear touches is that when you talk to a manager or a CEO or a high visionary um, or, a, you know, whatever the person's role is in a business, man, look, you begin to unpack what they do. Mm-hmm. It's, it's leading people. Mm-hmm. Um, that's right. And, right? And, yeah, it's, it's just, right. and, and you, you're responsible for the environment and the space that they work in. That's right. You got to cast vision. You got to make sure the you know, right language and right culture. That's right. So all of these things matter. And I love the fact that we get to be right in the heart of it. I agree. It's really I, exciting and really know, uh, humbling. As you were talking about just these different guys, uh, it, uh, Isaiah, uh, yep. our guy, the barber. Yes, sir, right? bro. Yep. Uh, popped into my mind and how he's, he's setting this barber shop on fire. Yes, he is, bro. And uh, he's stepping into that and saying, man, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, Man, I want to be a part of this movement. I yep. want to be a part of Boom. Yep. I want to carry the gospel with me everywhere I right. go. So when I'm cutting a dude's hair or or my colleague next to me or across or whatever, and yeah. and we've been in that barber shop, oh, yeah. uh, and it's been amazing to <laughs> That's right. to, to see what's going on inside of there, you yeah. know. And then they I can think cut about, hair real good too. Oh man, yeah, can they, actually they, cut. Yeah, they, it's they, one thing if you you know you got the gospel, but you can cut hair. Hold on, they got to. <laughs> <laughs> rethink your craft a little bit. Yeah, but these right. guys can actually cut some hair, yeah, they man. They can cut some hair, man. Yeah, they got some yeah, chop, man. Yeah. yeah. And so then I think about Derek Merchant yep. um, and how he leads. He's a quiet mm, leader. Yeah. Um, right? And and he'll he'll tell you, man, I'm I'm more on the side of being, you know, a little bit more reserved or shy. Of course, yeah. Uh, he doesn't want the platform. Right. Um, but, man, what he does want right. is he wants the kingdom of God ushered into his business. Yep. On the yes, daily basis, man. I mean, this dude is yeah. unbelievable to watch his business and how it's thriving, oh, yeah, it's how flourishing. the Lord has, has blessed it. Man, mm-hmm. he's brought two pastors yep. into his team full time on staff. Yep. On staff. Yeah. Um, Paid by the organization. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's to right. come in and just to encourage yep. his his people and for them to have a place where they can go and they can speak and talk and, and yep. seek counsel. That's right. Uh, biblical counsel. And I thought, man, what an incredible deal. And, you know, so what we want to do with this season yes, sir. is highlight and talk to some of those guys and say, man, how are you How are you doing this? And, and how has Boom helped you along with that? But then ultimately, you know, what's the Lord been telling you? Mm-hmm. And how's he been leading you and guiding you 
uh, yeah. through this movement of bringing and ushering in the kingdom of God yes. into your into your sphere of influence. Steve always says uh, your um, uh, your network is your mission field. That's right. That's right. right. And so we talk about missions and all this kind of stuff, and instantly as a society we think about going to Africa or South America or these things, and I've never felt that call. Right. Um, but there's absolutely a call in my life. And that mission field is that home building business and that gym in San Angelo. That's right. And some of the things that we've got, right? Yeah, and so, that's a good word. And even for like, you know, for me and Keith, I mean, this this season for us, I mean, I've, you know, boom, boom for a year now and some change. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I've received more clarity from God via the organization of boom for what my purpose and what my calling is within this organization. Um, is it business? It is. But, but in business, w- what am I really called to do? You mm-hmm. know, and, and God's really been showing me kind of crystal clear through saying no to this, yes to this. This is part of the process. So I think season two for a lot of you guys who are listening and watching um, will be clarifying, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Look look at it as us peeling back the layer of the onion, just going deeper. Um, There's going to be some part twos. uh, Mm -hmm. Buchanan, my Mm -hmm. books, is coming Mm -hmm. back for a part two. Um, Some new faces, some new voices you're going to hear. But all of this is to help drill you into deeper what your purpose and what your calling is, what your identity is in Christ yep. as a man, how you operate at home, um, how you operate with your wife and your kids. Yep. So important, I think, just for us to be, we talked about this, the whole person, right? Not just at your job, um, but also in your home, right? Yep. Winning at home as well. It's good to win on your job. It's good mm-hmm. to win uh, and make money. Uh, that's great. Yeah. But but to win at home is even greater. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, that's the platform that God has given us to kind of keep us accountable and also to give us life, yeah, right? Yeah. To help us for fulfilled. I mean, there's so much to be said about that as well. So that's our hope and our prayer through this. Yeah. This next yeah. We want to, well. you know, we want to <laughs> encourage you not only in business, uh, but we're going to bring some guys on that, you know, they're focused on, you know, mental health yes, sir. Yep. Um, and different things like that because we ultimately realize there has to be a balance. Yes, sir. Um, in all this, and we want <laughs> you to be the best leader that you can possibly be inside your organization. Um, or if you're just an independent guy and, mm-hmm. and able to go out and just reach other people, such as a barber, right? He right. may not have an organization, right. uh, but man, how many people sit in his chair Boy. on the daily and how yeah. many people can he impact a lot of hands, uh, for yep. the kingdom? And so what we want to do with season two is bring some guests in um, who are who are booming businesses mm-hmm. um, and who are going out and making an impact and, and they're realizing, hey, I am the epicenter of the boom. That's right. Come on, uh, man. man. I, can, Come on. I can reach and impact people more than I ever realized. Yeah. Um, and it's not just leadership, man. It's it's ushering in the kingdom of God right. uh, into this place so that they can experience it, taste it, see it, and feel it. And so what we want is for, you know, 30 minutes or so yep. for you to be able to, to, to break your rhythm and take a drink of water, That's get right. refreshed. Come on, man. Um, and, and experience the Lord for, for a little bit to recharge you in the middle of the week yep. so that you can go out and advance his kingdom. That's a good word. Yeah, there's lots to be said about that. Um, so much that that we kind of, you know, walk through in these podcasts. I think uh, one one big thing I would want to say before we close is just to, man, share the podcast. Uh, put it to your Instagram, Facebook page. Share it. Um, you're gonna get updates about the six eight summit. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get videos uh, that promote the summit. Um, there's some gear coming too, perfectly as well for the summit. There's all these different things we have planned. And I really want you guys to be aware of that uh, to help us kind of really launch out properly. Um, I see this also as kind of a tandem approach to this next season that we're moving into, the next fall, I guess. We're in school year, back in school, football season, right? Yep. Um, there are so many things that God is doing mm-hmm. in uh, your life, in our life, and just the lives of all those around us that as leaders, we have to be so careful mm-hmm. uh, of our own health and how we're navigating these these times. Remember, fluid times call for flexibility. And so stay flexible, mm-hmm. uh, stay aware. It's kind of the whole football term, stay on your toes. Yep. Just, just be, be mindful of what's happening um, because God will speak to us and lead us in that. Um, other than that, man, I'm encouraged to see what God does yep. next season. Yep. I'm really Absolutely. excited about it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Enjoy this one, man. Indeed. Yeah, we'll man. be back soon. We'll have yep. a guest. Uh, stay we, tuned. Yep, stay tuned. In the meantime, Go out, be the epicenter of the boom. If you liked what you heard today on the epicenter, be sure and click that subscribe button down below and click the bell so that you're notified whenever we drop new content. Also, be sure to connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 
And know that you can find all of our episodes on your favorite platform, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Now go out, be the epicenter of the boom.